Madrid, home of Marines, Colchoneros, and the host of the 2019 Champions League final. 124 games and 371 days since last year's showpiece, an English winner is set to be crowned in the Spanish capital. Liverpool returned to the home of their 2018 final vanquishers, looking to become the third most decorated team in Champions League history. But they have to get past an all too familiar foe in Tottenham, who are playing in just their second ever major European final. Madrid, however, have no such shortage of continental silverware, as we'll explain in this handy montage. The last five Champions League winners have been based in Spain, with Real Madrid taking home the trophy a staggering 13 times overall. This will also be the fifth final contested in Madrid. The other four taking place at Real's Santiago Bernabeu. Saturday will be the 13th time an English team will lift the cup and the second in this very city after Nottingham Forest in 1980. If Mo Salah's on the winning side at the Wanda, he'll be the first Egyptian to win the competition. He may have to do it the hard way, however, as the only previous All-English final between Man United and Chelsea was decided on penalties. Rach. Since we're approaching the final, I think we need a big name guest. Someone who knows how to win in Madrid. Somebody who's won it with Liverpool. Somebody who's played in an epic Champions League comeback. Someone like Jebby Alonso? Yeah, perfect. Let's go find him. Gabby, let's start with semi-finals. Now, you're no stranger to a remarkable comeback, but that second leg for Liverpool against Barcelona, that was something special, wasn't it? Absolutely. I think that I have talked with many people that they were there. And my first question was, was the atmosphere better than 2005 against Chelsea? Because that was my peak uh, atmosphere that I had lived. And they told me, equal, even better. At Anfield, you can expect such big nights. But against Barca, it made it everything bigger and even more, more surprising. I'm sure that those players, they will never forget that night. With yourself and Steven Gerrard, the midfield was a key strength in 2005. Looking at the current list of players, who would you start in the final? I think that Henderson, he's, you know, He's the captain, he's the engine, he's the heart. He puts everything in motion with, with the ones who were played with Jalun or with, with Keita if he's, he's fit from, from the injury, Milner as well. So I think that they have been able to, to find such a good idea that whoever plays, it works. That's a big part of, uh, of the manager's job. And you say you, you regret maybe not ever playing under Klopp, but how does he potentially compare the likes of Rafa Benitez or Pep Guardiola? Emotionally, I think that he's, he's able to, to deliver this passion, this hunger to the players. And, and you can see that uh, after each game, you, you can feel the connection that he has with the players. And when you have that from the players, you have almost everything. Liverpool is football and passion, football essence. And he's the perfect fit for that position. And apart from that, he's able to Strategically, he's very good. He's preparing the, the game plan. He prepares it very well. And you know that in, in two legs, Liverpool, nowadays, they can beat any team in the world. They missed out on the Premier League. As a player, does that add on the pressure of facing a Champions League final? Or does that just add to your motivation? Add to the motivation. For me, winning or losing the final, it won't mean that it's, it's a success or a failure. Because what decision that they have done, it's it's remarkable and they have my whole admiration. What do you think we'll see in the final, a more kind of open game like the semi-finals or a more cagier affair? I think that they know each other so well that the, the strengths and the weaknesses, they, they come together. So it's, it's quite, quite balanced, the, the final. Both styles are very, very uh, attacking football. They don't like to wait. They want to go for the things. Uh, for sure, Liverpool, they, they will like to to play with a high tempo. 
and, and Tottenham as well, they feel comfortable because they are used to that high tempo of the Premier League. So uh, it's Champions League final, but it's very like very English. It could be very English game. And uh, one more question as well. Um, Steven Gerrard has been doing super well in his managerial career. Do you have any ambitions maybe to, to go and manage at the Premier League in the near future? Myself? Mm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure, I think that step by step, but, but for sure I have aspirations, I am ambitious, I, I know the Premier League. I've been lucky enough to, to play there in, in Liverpool, that it's not a normal club, it's so special. So if I get ready, for sure I would love to, to be manager for one day. Looking forward to that. One day at Liverpool, that'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Stevie first. <laughs>Javi, let's take you back to 2005. We're half time in that final in Istanbul. What's the dressing room like? Just well, tell us. It's a big mix of emotions. Some players, they were devastated. Most of us we were angry with ourselves because we were thinking, oh, come on, uh, we can uh, waste this chance that easily. You know, knowing that it was almost impossible because we were being battled. They had a super team. But you know, miracles happen in football and when Stevie scored the header, we started believing in that we could do it. We were lucky enough to, to score that second goal, the third one in just six minutes. It was like a dream for us. What about that moment when you stepped up in front of goal? Talk us through that moment. Actually, it was my first professional penalty. So I had never taken really? a, a, a professional penalty. But you know, a week before, Stevie missed a penalty against Spurs. So Rafa gave us the instruction that if there was a penalty, I was going to take it. I knew that it was my turn. I had to take that, that ball, the responsibility, you know. And I was tense, but not nervous. But when I see the images now, I say, wow, I look nervous. <laughs> I look nervous. When I saw that Edida saved, probably they were the quickest five meters of my life to get the rebound. And if I wouldn't have got the rebound, you know, probably my, my career would have been different. The, the, the final would have been different. So at the 60th minute, the goal goes in. You still have so much more time to play. What goes through your mind then? We thought, OK, we have another life. We knew that we had to survive till the penalty shootout. We, we knew that that was going to be our chance. Stevie was playing right back. Cara was with cramps. Uh, <laughs> we, were, we were running and defending, not having many chances, but we wanted to, to reach the penalty shootout. You've already taken one in the game. Where, where were you on the list? Well, I, I tell you. I went to Rafa and I, Rafa, Rafa uh, which one I'm taking? And he, he said, no, no, you're not taking. You are not taking. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was going to be sixth or seventh, I think. So, but, you know, <laughs> I understood his decision. You were a massive part as well to Rails route to the final against Atletico in 2014. You were suspended yeah. in the final. Yeah. Um, tell me about the comparisons between how it felt to be part of the comeback and then sitting, not even on the bench, in the stands. The final in 2005, uh, we were not favourites. We were, we were a surprise to be in the final and even to be a champion. The final with Real was completely different. We had been chasing for it for, for a long time. And, you know, la decima, la decima, la decima, year after year. And finally we got it. So it was like, <sighs> and being against Atletico, the way it was, so dramatic, till the 92nd minute with Sergio's header, and I was on the stands. So my, my, I was a fan, I was so nervous all, all 90 minutes, and at the end I got jumping and I was <laughs> celebrating with my, with my uh, teammates, and I was suspended again, but it was worth it. It was worth it, for sure. Thanks, Abby. Now, in a minute, we're going to be putting your knowledge to the test. No need to get nervous about it yet. It's not quite a Champions League final. But first, how about another wholesome helping of retro 2D action from the guys at 8-Bit Football? Duncan Alexander from up to here. You were the master at passing when it came to football, but that's not quite as useful in quizzes. Let's see if you can get any of these questions right. Okay, so that was our Opta stats guru there, Duncan Alexander. He's going to ask you five questions about your career. 
we can give you a clue to just one of the questions. Question one. You and two other players have featured for both Bayern and Liverpool in the Champions League. Can you name either one of the other two? Didi Haman. He's got one on the board, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Dima Haman. The other was Shakiri. Question two. You once said that tackling isn't a quality to aspire to, but how many tackles did you make in the Premier League in your final season with Liverpool? Was it 29, 59 or 89? Mm, between 59 and 89. It has to be 89. Correct, 89 is the right answer. <laughs> you are known for your creativity, but when it comes to assists, do you have more than Mohamed Salah in the Premier League, the same amount or fewer? I need a clue. Please. You got 17 Premier League assists for Liverpool. He's got fewer. He's got fewer. You have more. Yes. That is incorrect. Oh, come on. Xavi. <laughs> Two years. By one, oh. he has 18 assists. You famously scored from your own half in a Premier League game against Newcastle in 2006. But which keeper did you score past? Was it Tim Krul, Steve Harper or Shea Given? Uh, Steve Harbour. Didn't even need a clue. No, Perfect. No, 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 no. No. I've, seen the, I've seen the video many times. And you did it as well, so there we go. Four players have taken penalties in Champions League finals since you did in 2005. Name any single one of them. Uh, Griezmann. He has a point. Can you name any more, just out of interest? Uh, Arjen Robben. Robben? I can't give you an extra no. point, but I would do. <laughs> yeah. And the others were Gundogan and... Cristiano Ronaldo. You got four out of five and you are joint second on our leaderboard. Next to Heidegger Johnson. Now, in a minute, it is time to test your nerve out on the pitch against these bad boys. <laughs> uh, and what a task that is indeed. But first, for the last time of the series, let's hear from our goal correspondents in Euro Express. So, Tottenham in a Champions League final still all sounds a bit strange, doesn't it? And undoubtedly, while Spurs are massive underdogs for the game against Liverpool, Tottenham have proved one thing in this season's Champions League, it's to expect the unexpected. And with a fully fit squad for the first time in probably the entire tournament and Harry Kane likely to be available for selection, it should put to bed some of those concerns about where manager Mauricio Pochettino might be next season. I predict a 2-1 win for Spurs after extra time. Tears of sorrow in Kiev last season will it be tears of joy for Liverpool and Madrid this time around. Jürgen Klopp's side take on Tottenham in the first All-English Champions League final since 2008 and they'll go into the game as favourites as well, having won both the Premier League meetings between the sides this season, both of them 2-1. I'm backing them to make it a third win in a row against the Londoners. Maurizio Pochettino's side beat Manchester City en route to the final but may find the Premier League runners-up a little too hot to handle. I'm going for Liverpool 3, Tottenham 1 on June the 1st. One more game left of the season for Arsenal and what a massive game it is. Arsenal versus Chelsea in the Europa League final. Win that one, they're back in the Champions League. That's about 60 million extra pounds for Unai Emery to spend in the transfer market in the summer. That's what's on the line for Arsenal when they go to Azerbaijan. They beat Chelsea here pretty comfortably in the league just a couple of months ago. I think it's going to be a little bit tougher this time around. No Aaron Ramsey, obviously, will be a big blow, but I do think that Arsenal will just about get the job done. 2-1 Arsenal in Baku. Chelsea in a London derby match, but this time it's in Baku. This time it's a Europa League final. They want to win the trophy again, just like they did in 2013. Their only other appearance in the competition. Chelsea are a giant in this competition, a powerhouse, and they must win honours. They're the most successful team since Roman, Roman Abramovich took over the club, and they don't really take losing very well. Um, Chelsea fans are unsure about Maurizio Sarri still. His future's unsure. He needs to win this competition. Uh, so this game's going to have huge implications, even though Chelsea are already in next season's Champions League. OK, Javi, you've taken some high-pressure penalties in your time, but have you ever faced a goalkeeper as intimidating as the one in the, the goal there, Johnny Nelson? 
He looks, he looks promising. We'll, we'll see how it is the, the challenge. You're being very kind to him. Anyway, so five penalties. The score to beat is 130 by your former teammate Harry Kuehl, and the maximum you can get is 150. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. Got let's it. do this. Penalty one. The normal penalty worth 10 points. You ready? Yep. Oh. Put him off. Ow. I needed a warm up. Next up, the wrong footed penalty worth 20 points. Jersey's back. Oh, that's more like it. Right hand, bottom corner, nicely done. 30 points up for grabs with a no look penalty. Woohoo! Easy as you like. Things are starting to get a little bit more challenging. They're a boner now for 40 points. Yes, different side. Left, nicely done. And finally, to top it off, we have the blindfolded penalty worth 50, 50. points. I'll be right here. Yes! yes. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Happy with that one. <laughs> that was a good one. I didn't see it. Nicely done. Nice. 140. <laughs> that does mean you have beaten Harry Kuehl there. You're now sitting on top of the leaderboard. No one can beat you. Thanks for coming on, mate. An absolute pleasure. Thank you for everything. Thank you so Thank much. You. And a good luck with the coaching as well. I'm looking forward to seeing you back in the Premier League in just a few years' time. Yeah, just a few years. It's montage time. What a season it's been in the Champions League. From the sub-zero coast of Sweden to the majestic Wanda Metropolitano here in Madrid, we have seen it all on our UCL tour. Thanks to Henrik Larsson, Christian Zieger, Ida Good Johnson, Yaya Torre, Harry Kuhl, and of course, Xabi Alonso. All that remains now is 90 minutes in that stadium behind us. Yep, and we're gonna go beg someone for tickets. How about that, Rach? Adios. Bye. Beg, borrow, or steal.